one week ago I found myself in the market for the GPU. And let me just give you a bit of a backstory, guys. So I've been using this thing that is the EVGA GeForce RTX 27. It's it's a very good card. I got it from a friend, by the way. EVGA, you know the story, great cards. It only has 8 gigabytes of video RAM. And one might think, well, this might be enough for gaming, and it's not. And I'm not a typical PC gamer, guys. But what I do use is DaVinci Resolve. And with AG of RAM, I was getting a lot of issues uh, when using Fusion or even the color grade menu. I don't really color grade so much, but nevertheless, I use the magic mask. So I found myself in the market for the GPU and the 50 series was just out. And I was like, just thinking, hey, you know, like 50, 90, I cannot buy this because I just, yeah, I'm not able to sell any organ or like just sell my cards, for example. And then I was thinking maybe another you know, 5080, but the 5080 doesn't make sense because it doesn't really have a lot of um, VRAM. And I was thinking, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna go for the 5070 Ti. I know not a lot of video RAM that I can benefit for sure. And DaVinci, and it's still supercharged and it's a very powerful card. And then I realized, no, I probably will not need this. I'm not running the Indiana Jones Great Circle native 4K resolution, guys, 60 FPS. And I'm gonna show you, I'm using all the highest available settings, okay? Scrolling down is Supreme, Supreme Ultra, everything is just maxed out. But of course, I'm not using ray tracing or pop tracing because if I am to enable just let's say the medium version with ray tracing that doesn't have 3D pop tracing and on 4K, well, it's 4D ish FPS, which isn't pleasant, right? And I can probably just thumb down the resolution a bit and play this in full HD and maybe get to like 50 FPS, but I don't really want to do so. Um, then again, like, why did I just buy the car that I bought right now and if you don't really know uh, you probably didn't see the title or something I bought the 3090 it's the founders edition it's a car produced directly by Nvidia and some people might think like why why am I buying an almost five years old card to use I mean like this doesn't make any sense and I'm gonna show you it really makes sense because not only am I able to play this beautiful game at native 4k resolution on the supreme setting you can also see this game already uses like more than 13 gigabytes of my video RAM, which is something not so possible with this card here. And imagine guys, if you buy a new card, right, like the 5070, and you start with like 16 G of RAM, for how long is it gonna work? Because these games, I can assure you, they'll be just more hungry and etc. Now, people will say, yeah, Indiana Jones, you know, it's not fully optimized, and it might be as well the case. But what I want to show you guys is something else. Now, if I am to show you this picture here, I'm using the 3090, it uses the Nvidia Ampere, then we have the 4090, which was also a nice, very obvious choice, out of Loveless, and now the latest, 5090 Black Ball. So, in terms of just raw performance, my card is only like 10,000 versus 16,000 on the 4090, and a whooping 21,000 on the 5090. So, there is no doubt the 5090 is gonna be a beast, but guys, even when I play occasionally games on my PC, I don't have anything against not using the OLSS, just play 4K native, or sometimes maybe not able to play 4K, but like 1440, and then just still use the highest available settings. I'm not a big fan of frame generation. I did not have the chance to try it myself, but I'm thinking right now, listen, I'm not so sold on the technology, maybe with AI and with all of this, and then maybe the future is gonna be great, but honestly, I want to experience the games the way they really are meant to be experienced by the people that made the games. And um, this means really running more and more native. Now, apparently with ray tracing and puff tracing, this is for sure like another level. But hey guys, I only paid 500 year for the 3090. And I also found this site, Nickel City. So those guys run a bunch of benchmarks and a bunch of games and they aggregated the performance score. And um, you know, I'm comparing it with a 5070 Ti because this was the card I was thinking like, maybe I'm gonna get the 5070. But the thing is, the 5070 would only give me like a 20% boost for almost like 100% the price. So I started to scratch my head and I said, listen, I don't need this one, right? Like for sure, higher core clock speed and also boost clock speed. And it has like almost double the size of the transistor, like 45 million transistors. Can you imagine guys on a board like this? But my card, yeah, although being old and eight nanometer process, 30, 50 watts, it still runs great. And you can see there are even some areas like the ROPs that I am not so far away from the 5070. Also something else I wanted to share with you guys, I did undervolt my card. So right now I'm using 850 millivolts. 
up to 1860 megahertz and this is the curve you know like it's a very easy thing to do there is a guy called i water gpus you can watch his guide if you follow his guide you can do this in like two minutes and guys there are a lot of gains i do have a 650 watts psu but it's a gold one so i was thinking like listen this card can for sure burn 350 watts and in, if I now just remove my undervolt, you know, it's like this. But guys, I'm running colder and I don't really necessarily lose FPS performance. Why not use an undervolt? And as you can see, I don't have any problems with that card. And I can show, like, even in game. So I'm using a Ryzen 5700X, you know, like my CPU burns like 60 to 80 watts because it's undervolted as well. And also, I applied to 1 megahertz a boost on the clock but then you can see guys like with a, a vram of almost 14g and my car consuming 200 watts and my cpu well it's absolutely playable with the 650 i don't get any blue screens i don't get any restarts and you can see how amazingly good this game is you know without the rtx right and without of course the pot tracing so i'm not saying you know like ray tracing for sure will just blow our minds and pot tracing and there are videos like this you can check digital foundry but at the end of the day this is a beautiful game so with the turning 19 20 25 you can save a lot of bucks you can play games at 1440p or like 4k native right and of course there is a whole other reason why i want to use this and i'm going to show you guys it's davinci that i'm using because apparently davinci requires a lot of resources specifically on the video realm but you know what i did guys because i only paid 500 bucks for the card i also got myself 64 g ram and i had already 32 so right now i have 98 gigabytes of ram and believe it or not when you use fusion in da vinci for sure you're gonna need that ram so this is really important because i'm using now my pc maniac my workstation to be able to edit the videos that you see right now and with this investment of 500 euro i can do things like this let me show so this is a clip that i edit you know i'm in the color menu and now I've selected myself. So I'm also using like the better mask you can see. And when I'm not screen recording guys, I'm gonna be tracking this with like 40 FPS. This is absolutely insane. Was not possible when I was using this thing here that is really, really ancient. And I wanna just show you guys. So the GPU is for sure doing heavy lifting here together with the CPU, but in the color menu from DaVinci, you know, like we have here cooler acceleration. So for sure my gpu is pulling up some work and you can see you know like that whole tracking is just insane then also guys you might think like why 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 did i bought some ram and i'm going to show you because when i go to the fusion menu the story changes it becomes something totally different so let me just show you what i mean i'm going to add a magic mask i'm going to pretty much try to do the same here the moment now i hit the tracking and i'm going to do it right now you're going to see it is really really very slow because this thing apparently doesn't use um, the video acceleration but you know, something that DaVinci loves, or specifically Fusion, is the RAM. Because at some point, this will climb up to almost like 50, 60 gigabytes of RAM. And this is absolutely budget crazy. So for sure, DaVinci Resolves loves the RAM and loves the video RAM. And I was thinking, listen guys, this is good. I have 24 gigabytes of video memory. And the 50 series, guys, you have like... 14, 16, but you don't have like 24, so you either need to buy the 1590, which has 32, or you're stuck with 16, and 16 is not enough. Now we can see, guys, this is right now my random access memory, right? The RAM I have, and if I just leave this for like two minutes, it's going to climb up like crazy, right? So I'm not joking, you can see from here. Okay, but forget about this. I want to go back just to the benchmarks and show you combined synthetic benchmarks versus the 3090 and the 5070. So yeah, it's like 20% increase pass mark 20 percent increase and even in some games guys the 3090 will be better now i'm not sure if you follow the threads online people that wanted to play old games that use nvidia physx yeah the 50 series apparently scrapped that one so good luck with that but the thing is the 3090 although being five years old is still very powerful i mean in the raw power all right and when i say very powerful yeah you are missing on a lot of new things which is the frame generation stuff like this but we're gonna get dlss 4 already if you want to use this you can use this with the 3090 so it's not a problem at all you can see guys my memory right memory just going absolutely insane and then i'm thinking listen this was a good investment for me so if i was not constrained by budget which i guess a lot of people on planet earth are well i might have went for the 5090 but this costs almost like an arm and leg and yeah here you can see there is a real gain between the 3090 and the 5090 right but what about like the 4090 guys because with the 4090 
it is still the same story. So 49 is still being very powerful with 24 gigabytes of RAM and etc. And what happens when I compare the 4090 to the 5070 Ti? You can see it's kind of obvious. So yeah, the thing is, you know, with Nvidia cards, guys, if you buy the latest or the greatest, even if it's an old generation, it might be still a very good card if you know what you want to do with it. In my case, it's occasional gaming. And of course, I use it as my workstation. So, guys, I hope that this video made sense. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, VST over, and bye.